<laughs> I am here. <laughs> so why don't we, um, before we start, we do the, um, the opening verse together, okay? Dharma infinitely is rarely met even a hundred thousand million kalpas. Now we see it, hear it, receive and maintain it. May we completely realize the Tathagata's true meaning. Okay. Can can uh everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. It's probably uh, appropriate to talk a little bit about the virus and actually when you when you think about uh, technology and modern day civilization and the affluency, all these things uh, what the Buddha taught uh, uh, remains the same. The principles of what the Buddha taught remains the same. It's not old stuff. And this new stuff is not new stuff. So his Four Noble Truths, the eight ways of uh, rightful living still apply to this very day and will continue to apply ever so because they are, they are the underlying principles of the universe. So the virus is not out there. It's already here. This is, um, I don't mean to frighten people, but uh, the reality of it, it is already here. We are not being attacked by anything. We are well supplied. We are endowed with this peacefulness or this silence that covers everything. So let me just introduce you this word. Uh, can, can you see it? Uh, Sally uh, gave me this word and it means, I think it might be a verb, uh, moku, moku. Moku means to be silent, uh, not talking, no speaking, okay? Uh, but I'm looking for the word silent because there are two other uh, kanjis with it. Den, den is like transmission and ju is receive. You should know these two words because den means transmission. We are not creating anything. We are only transmitting something. And the other word is ju, uh, like ju kai. When you receive precepts, the, the old 
the old form of Jew has three hands. Um, now they've modernized it and there's no, no more three hands, there's only two hands. One is uh, like above and it's, it's handing you something and you are below and you are, you are re receiving something. And the third hand, the mystery hand, is like it, it up, upholds uh, this act or this phenomena, giving and receiving mysteriously something. So Moku Danju, you should become familiar with that. And actually, um, when I was a much younger student, people would ask me, uh, what, what, what was the special quality of Suzuki Roshi? And actually, the only thing I came up with that he was very calm, but I didn't understand what moku den ju means. He never explained it. He never wrote it out. He demonstrated it. And so that, I think that's what made for this great uh, attraction or draw that, that he had, and it was in his silence. So that's Moku Denju, okay? I think uh, uh, Chalku Ergen, when he demonstrated that, he would snap his fingers. And then that was his Moku Denju. You, you understand what I'm saying? This silence, this uh, this silence that's within ourselves. And so everything is within ourselves. And that's what Suzuki Roshi says. And so did Titna Han, but they didn't, they never told us there was a, not a theory, but a, yeah, a principle behind that. So let me just uh, read you a little bit about this principle and it's uh you it's called uh it's it's a libertative technique wayun or the avatam saka sutra and sutras they're not just words they're they're they represent the universe that's why a sutra is flawless they aren't man created no one, we discovered it, but we didn't create it. We were just transmitting it. And that's the essence of the Dharma, to transmit this moku, den, ju. So in this sutra, the Wa Yen or Kegon, Yogacara Sutra, I'll read, uh, it sounds it means, uh, four phrases. And I like Isanzani because the Koreans are, are very short with everything. They, they can sum up everything in a very short, uh, in, in, in a very few lines. And also the, the Korean alphabet is very short compared to Chinese or Japanese. So here's the four lines from the Kagon Sutra. If you wish to thoroughly understand all the Buddhas of the past, present, and future. Then you should view the nature of the whole universe. The entire universe as being created by mind alone. So, Nothing is outside of ourselves. Like, I think that's one reason why people 
uh, when you begin to sit and you like sitting, in fact, you become attached to sitting because we are looking inward. We're, we are no looking outward. Outward is the objective world, which we have this subject and the objective world. There's conflict. There's, there's no uh, peace with it. And that's what creates our suffering. And this was conveyed to us by Buddha because he said also there's, in the third noble truth, there's a cessation of suffering. So it's just, it's so in Zazen, because we like it so much, we are not aware that we are not focusing on the object anymore the objective world. We're focusing inward. We're, our attention and focus is focused inward to the thought and what's behind the thought. So just a simple uh, example, there was this, uh, teacher that was walking down the road with his uh, a new disciple. And he asked uh, the disciple as they were walking, uh, do, you, do you miss, uh, what do you think about, and especially what do you miss? And the young disciple said, I missed uh, my village. Uh, my parents, family, the ho house, home, trees, landscape. And then the teacher said, with that thought, focus that thought from where it comes from. What is behind those thoughts? So the, the disciple, he stood there for a moment and he said, when he gets here, he didn't say there. He said, when he gets here, I, there's nothing there. And he says, there, there it is. You have entered the first step. There was nothing there. So this, this is what uh, Echo Henschel uh, to focus back into not just the thought, but exactly where it comes from. If we don't, this is the way to end thinking or to see the essence, the nature of thought is, is empty. There's nothing there. And this is the, the freedom, the liberation. So let's just, uh, if you wish to thoroughly understand all the Buddhas of the past, present, and future, that's not, not, it's not just them, it's us. Each one of us are Buddhas of the past, present, and future. Then you should view the nature of the whole universe as being created by mind alone. It took me a very long time to begin having an inkling of what this means, mind alone. This mind alone is not the objective world. It's this world. It's everything is within us. We are creating everything. So I uh, mentioned this a few times about uh, Bunjum Sinim. He was a great uh, painter in the Korean tradition and uh, he painted Bodhidharmas uh, most of his life. And uh, two years ago, I found out he had died uh, in the fall and actually he had died in the spring and I, 
I felt really distraught about that, that I didn't, uh, I wasn't aware of this, no one told me. And so a Korean uh, American monk, a Bung, um, a Bung Sa Suni, he, he said, Bung Ju's death comes from you. Now, how could that be? Because he died outside of me. Umju's death comes from you. This, this is really freedom. Because we think of things as outside of ourselves. He's over in Korea. I didn't hear of it. So you feel really distraught. It's not that we have no emotions, but our emotions are anchored in uh, the universe's foundation i mean we, we i felt i do feel uh a great loss but i don't feel that clinging loss that's extra loss extra sorrow extra grief um people normally say when when they lose someone or something sad happens uh but i keep it in my heart but that's not all it means. It means four or five or six or 10 degrees deeper than your heart. This is the Wayan Sutra. Everything has been created by your mind alone. Difficult to understand, but you can understand it through Zazen because that's what unites or uh, dissolves the conflict of opposites, which creates suffering, which creates our suffering. Can, can you, everyone wait a minute, I need a glass of water. <laughs> okay, can you wait just a minute? Okay, okay. Thank you. So, uh, mind alone means that uh, we we hold everything. We uphold everything. And this is the liberative technique or method of freedom, being free from yourself, not from something else, not from something outside yourself. In fact, uh, the Tibetans have a tradition, they have a, uh, they wear a red cord, which uh, Dalai Lama's attendant and uh, some high lamas uh, taught me how to make. And the, re the reason why I enjoyed making them was because the, the red cord uh, made from red, red string and in the middle of, of the cord uh, was a, a knot and was tied exactly like a Vajra. Vajra, the same shape as a Vajra. And the Vajra means it, it has the meaning like diamond cutter. It cuts your delusion. It cuts. So you wear you wear it underneath your robes or your dress, and the and the Vajra knot faces here. And the other the other knot is just a functional knot. And this knot protects you not from somebody else, but from hurting yourself. It protects you from hurting yourself. So this is the whole point. Isn't it, isn't it interesting? <laughs> this is maybe new news to you, but actually it's very old news for humanity. 
It, it protects you from hurting yourself. The virus is here. And actually, maybe in a, a, a regular way, the, we are in the midst of many viruses, but it so has to be this one. And this is how we work with it. Sazen is the best way. So I, I hope you understand a little bit, at least, what I'm saying about uh, I, I keep this loss or I keep this sorrow in, uh, in my heart. But it's 10 times deeper than that because there's no more clinging, clinging to the emotion. We don't need to cling to it because it's here already. Of course, we miss the people. We miss all the people that have died or are dying. We have the feeling, but we don't cling to the emotion. I think you understand what I'm saying. So this is the Kagon Sutra, Yogacara. And so since, since we're, uh, Since we were on that subject, Bachu Banzu, he was one of our great ancestors, maybe one of the greatest uh, Buddhist uh, historians and philosophers in our entire lineage. He wrote something, and you can get it on Google, but it's very difficult to understand. The 30 verses on the teaching of mere manifestation. So he goes through the whole thing of mine only. And I, I just read you, I've read this before many times, but it takes many times, many, many times to have this understanding. Verse 23, okay? The non nature of dharmas, small d, dharmas means things, the non-nature, the no-nature of dharmas has been taught only in connection with the three no-natures of the three natures. One, the first is the no-nature because of its own character. The second is the no nature because it does not exist by itself. No nature, emptiness, absolute, does not exist by itself. It's interdependent with everything. The third is the absence of its own nature. There's no nature here because it is empty. It is empty of emptiness. This is the ultimate truth of all dharmas. It is also suchness, the tata, suchness, thusness. It is the ultimate truth of all dharmas. It is also suchness, the tata. Since it is always things just as it is, just as they are. That is why it is mere manifestations. Mere manifestation means just as it is. The 30 verses on the teachings of mere manifestations of just as it is. You know, when they say no nature of character, no nature uh, does not exist by itself or no nature because of its own nature, it means, you, you remember in the Heart Sutra, no eyes, no ears, uh, etc. No means emptiness, it means suchness. 
So when there's a negation, it means affirmation. But so, so like for instance, this glass of water, when this glass of water becomes empty, it doesn't mean the glass does not exist. This is, this is what emptiness, how emptiness is explained. As long, uh, verse 26, as long as consciousness does not dwell with the nature of as it is, the residues of dual grasping cannot come to an end. Dual grasping, clinging, attachment. Verse 27, although there may be perception all this is mere manifestation because this still involves an object of perception in front of it. It does not yet really dwell in mere that. There are three more. Verse 28, but when mind no longer grasps, when mind no longer clings an object of consciousness, it will stop at mere consciousness. For without any object to grasp, there is no longer any grasping. This is consciousness only. There's nothing to grasp. Verse 29. It is without discrimination and without attainment. It means our mind is without discrimination and without attainment that the supra mundane wisdom operates when the double incapacity is abandoned when the duality of things is abandoned the transformation at the base is realized and uh this is uh I repeat it again, verse 29, the mind is without discrimination. Discriminating awareness is different than discrimination. The mind without discrimination and without attainment, the mind no longer is fixed on attaining anything because it has, you have it already. This is the whole point. How can you attain something you already have? That the super mundane wisdom operates when the double incapacity is abandoned, when the duality or cessation of duality is abandoned. And this transformation at the base is realized. This is your realization. This is the last verse. It is the realm of non-setback. Inconceivable, beneficial, stable, bliss, the body of liberation called the Dharma body of the great sage. This is the Dharmakaya. Let's see, we're, we're three minutes uh, over, but I close reading you uh, 
this paragraph from uh, Shimano Roshi and Busho. I have to, these are the, these are the footnotes, so I have to get my magnifying glass out, okay? This applies to the same thing that we've been talking about. Uh, during, uh, when Dogen came back to China, uh, from China, uh, there was a big renaissance happening in Japan. And uh, there were different schools of Buddhism. And he said, for his adversaries, Bu Sho, uh, Bu, Bu is uh, Buddha and Sho is nature. Bu Sho is the nature of Buddha. This is for his adversaries. A kind of divine nature finding its place in some human beings. or the nature from Buddha, a kind of divine grace. Dogen's Busho is not the nature of Buddha or the nature from Buddha, but the nature which is Buddha. So that was a complete difference from the other schools of, of Buddhism. And this nature, which is Buddha, is the Buddha nature. The nature is the world as it happens. As it happens, meaning that there is, there is this, there is that. And Buddha is the no nature of things, or other words, emptiness. We said this before, no nature of things. All things that Buddhists call dharma are subject to the law of cause and effect. That's karma. And uh, I thought Buddha, this, this was his discovery, but it was uh, from the Indians, the Hindus before. And he adapted it to this. All things that the Buddhists call Dharma, things are subject to the law of cause and effect, to karma. or the law of dependent co-arising. Nothing is independent of everything. That's the self. It claims its independency. But for us, the law of dependent co-arising expressed as follows. When there is this, when there's me, there is that, there's you. When this appears, that appears. When this does not appear, that does not appear. When there is no longer this, there is no longer that. Things have no I or mine. This is the basis of that. So, is it possible to have a few questions, Greta?
No. <laughs> say no. <laughs> it, it'd be good if you could show the person if they could raise their hand if they have a question, and then you could show their picture. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is it dark and blue, Major? <laughs> what do you think? Huh? Roshi, I have a question. What's Say your name. What? It's Cheryl. Oh. Hmm. Roshi, my question is when you offer Denju, when you offer Denju, what are you doing? I'm just sitting there. <laughs> no, no thinking. No thinking. Just sitting there. It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Roshi. Thank you. Dan? Hi, Roshi. Roshi, what was the name of the sutra that you just talked about in your in your talk? Oh. Can you say that again? What was the name of the sutra that you used in your talk? Um, you had different uh, parts or chapters to it, verses. The, the four lines? Um, no, there was, I think, 30, 30 verses in all. Well, that's Bashu Banzu. You, you can, you can, uh, you, you can look. Am I on? Mm -hmm. You you can look on Google Bashu Banzu's thirty verses. Okay, thanks, Roshi. Yeah. Adela, Adela from Poland. Say it again. How teacher can transmission wisdom to students. I, I did it already. <laughs> <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> what was the question? Can I teach you to a student? Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. You just did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so wonderful to see everybody. You know, now, now you have no excuse for not sitting. <laughs> All you do is you wash your face, you walk to your computer and sit down. You don't go outside except for Carol. Go outside. You have no excuse. <laughs> I've never this needed is, this. This is the creative side of the virus. <laughs> oh, just just one other thing is that there are blank uh, black squares on the screen, and they, their names after this. But I'd like to see the, the person. And also the person, the other to you too, unless so you're you, unless you're in your pajamas, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so reveal yourself, huh? When you get up in the morning, uh, dedicate your sitting to all the people that are suffering and that that have died. Okay, that'll help you get up because you just usually. Usually you just get up for yourself, but how about for the people that died, and how about all the people, first responders that are doing the hard work? Yeah, they're on the okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, Roshi. Thank you, Roshi. Sorry. <laughs> So that we, with all sentient beings, together realize the food.
the way. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Have a good day. <laughs> you too. Bye. 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 Thank you for invitation. Thank you for invitation. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you all. You too. Tell my mom about this one. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Wonderful for her to 